ever since uh, I was a kid and my voice changed, I've been told by people all over the country, uh, people of different ethnicities, backgrounds, I've been told by people that I have an incredibly white voice. That's what they say. <laughs> And people try to act like they can't hear it, but if I called and then showed up, you'd be surprised. Like, <laughs> you know, every time I, even my laugh is like, ha, ha, ha. Like, every time I laugh, someone somewhere gets audited. Like, that's what <laughs> the auditing is. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I didn't realize how, like white my voice sounded to people until I was in Louisiana where I grew up and uh, I was running for the bus. And the bus in Louisiana is not like the bus anywhere else because the bus in Louisiana comes once a year. It's a big deal. You need to make it knees to chest, okay? The stakes are high. I don't know if the bus stops. I've never been on it. But I was running so fast and so hard that I knocked down this old man. And I mean, I cleared him, okay? <laughs> Normally, I'd feel bad, but it's the closest my little body's ever come to football, so I was pretty excited. I was like, he might be dead. Look at me go. <laughs> you know? But I did feel bad, so I let the bus go. I helped him up to his feet. It was this, it was this old black man, and, and I even realized that he was blind, so I saw his stick. So I grabbed his stick. I put his stick back in his hand, and I was like, sir, I'm so sorry. I hope you're not injured. You know, you came out of nowhere. Please forgive me. And then this old blind black man went, Get your hands off me, honky! <laughs> and I was like, sir. <laughs> sir, I'm black. I'm black like you. <laughs> And he was like, nice track, cracker. Like there was nothing, there was nothing I could do. And I've never had to prove I was black for it, so I got mad, but then the matter I got, the whiter I sounded. <laughs> Until the point where I was just standing from like, by golly, I'm black, gosh darn it. <laughs> there was nothing I could do, it was terrible. <laughs> you know? I don't know, I don't know how to talk to people. Like, it's a real thing. I just, I, like, I have friends now, but the damage is done. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, I'd just sit in my room and read encyclopedias, which is not a kid you want to talk to, you know? <laughs> I was like, how's it going, sport? You want to know how many miles the earth is from the sun? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Get that away. You know what I mean? But now I'm used to being alone, so I'll just sit, I'll think about a thing, I'll sit and just be alone and thinking about the thing. But then when I talk to someone, they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, 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 I'm not crazy. I was thinking about this all day. Like, I, I ran through all the channels, all right? I'm not crazy, you're crazy, okay? I'm not, I can't be crazy. You need to check, you're, you're just finding out. I've been here, all right? Like, the best example I can give is, I don't get in heated arguments with people over, like, race or religion or politics or anything, because all the stuff I care about is too dumb for anybody else to care about. Like, no one, everyone is, you know what I mean? It's just me, you know what I mean? Just by myself. Like, the best example I can give is, when you go to the bathroom, and you wash your hands, and then you go to dry your hands, but there's no paper towels, there's just that air dryer. Where is the air coming from? <laughs> Where's the air coming from? That is bathroom air. That is, that is ass air, all right? You might as well fart your hands dry if you're gonna dry your hands like that. So then I leave the bathroom. I leave the bathroom with my hands wet, you know? So then I shake people's hands like, why are your hand wet? Cause I'm clean, okay? I'm not crazy, you're crazy, okay? I'm not crazy, you're crazy. Right? <laughs> you know, because I would just I would just sit alone and read and think and read more and then have nobody to talk to and then read and then finally talk to somebody and they're like, oh God, what's happening? You know what I mean? <laughs> like for instance, I read a lot of history books. You know, just sitting in my room, read a lot of world history, American history, 
Southern history, because I grew up in Louisiana, I just wanted to know. And one of the things I read that's always tripped me out, right, is that like after the Civil War, they let the slaves go. But the slaves still lived in the South. So you probably ran into your ex-slave like all the time. <laughs> Which has got to be the most awkward ex-run-in in history. Just like, oh my God, there he is. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Hey! How are you doing? Are you mad? <laughs> like that's, what else? What's she gonna do? I actually, no lie guys, I, I straight up, I had a nightmare one time. I, I had a genuine nightmare that I was a slave, which wasn't even the worst part of the nightmare. The worst part is that I was the worst slave in human history. I was the worst, I was so bad. I was yelling at the slave, and I was like, I'm not trying to start a revolution, I can't pick it up, all right? <laughs> No, I passed out from heat stroke twice today, okay? You can whip me if you want, but I'm anemic, so I will bleed out. And that's on you, okay? Oh, you're gonna kill me? Please kill me. Please kill me. I would love for you, to, this heat is what's killing me. I've had hay fever for two months. And then they moved me into the house, but they didn't teach me how to read, so I don't know any recipes. So the food is so bad that even the slaves are mad. Like, everyone is mad at me. And then I almost burned the house down trying to boil some water, you know? <laughs> to the point where Master comes up to me at the end of the dream, and he's like, look, uh, psh, look, I don't know what to do with you. You free, okay? Like, I can't. <laughs> I woke up fired from being a slave. <laughs> you know? They have this thing that happens uh, in New York a lot. I don't know if it happens in LA as much, but people will get a rescue dog. And this always has always bothered me. But they will get a rescue dog and they'll tell everyone the rescue dog story in front of the dog. <laughs> It's right there. You're telling its whole embarrassing life story. It's right here, it can hear you, you know what I mean? They do it all the time, like, oh, this is Fifi, she's a rescue, uh, <laughs> funny story, found her under a bridge, raggedy, you know what I mean? Like, dusty, struggling, you know what I mean? Only three hairs on her little head, you know? I tried to feed her, she even know how to eat. I was trying to feed her, she was like, <laughs> she had no idea how to eat. And so I had to grab her little mouth. I had to chew the food. I had to put the food in her mouth. I had to make her little head chew. I'm a hero. I'm a hero is what I'm saying. I'm a hero. You know? I wonder if dogs do that to us. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if dogs go to the park and see other dogs, and they're like, oh, yeah, look, that's Bill. He's a rescue. Uh... <laughs> Michaela left him and he lost his job in the same week, so he really hadn't been doing anything, all right? I can't even watch my shows because he's at home all the time. Now. It's absolute. Sometimes I will poop on the floor just to give him something to do that day. You know? And he'll try to act mad, but deep down he's like, thank you for giving me purpose. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. He's a rescue. I'm just trying to do my part, you know, help out. I, there's, a, there's a thing that always bothers me. I get, I get, I get uh, upset with people over how they use language just because it, it, if you use cliches, I feel like you don't care about this conversation. Like you're just using several things that have been said before. I think you're just making up things until I go away. That's, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Because people use the cliches without thinking about what they mean, you know? Like, people will say things like, have you ever noticed when people say, call me old-fashioned, it's always for something good? <laughs> you know, people are like, call me old-fashioned, but you should hold the door open for the person behind you. Or like, call me old-fashioned, but the man should pay for the date. Bad things happen in old-fashioned, you know what I mean? <laughs> are you serious? No one's ever like, call me old-fashioned, but we need some slaves around here. We really do. Like, we really, there's no more overhead to pay, all right? If they can build the pyramids, they can make Subway sandwiches. I will not lose my franchise this year. <laughs> um. 
It's insane. No one's ever like, call me old fashioned, but I don't like when women voice their opinion. That just always, <laughs> it has always upset at me. Feels gross. I don't like it. They're just throwing out ideas that I would have had if they had given me enough time to say it myself. <laughs> but then they're talking and it's like, ugh. You know? The other one that I really hate, that really kills me, really upsets me, is don't judge a book by its cover. I get what you're trying to say. I get, I get what you're getting at, you know what I mean? Don't judge just on appearances. Don't, it, there's more than what meets the eye. I get it, right? But that's a bad analogy. When was the last time a book had the wrong cover? <laughs> like, when, t t help me out. When have you been going to the bookstore to get a present for your niece? And you're like, I'll get Wayne the Pooh. She like Wayne the Pooh. And then you grab Wayne the Pooh. You just look at the cover. You don't read it. And so you grab Wayne the Pooh, and then you wrap it up, and then you give it to her. And then she unwraps it. And she's like, oh, Wayne the Pooh, I'm so excited. And then she turns the page past the cover, and it's Mein Kampf. That's never happened. <laughs> No one's going to a bookstore just putting different books on different covers. That's insane. Sometimes I'll be in New York on the subway. I'll be like, he's about to be crazy. I don't know what he's about to do, but he's about to be crazy. I can tell you that right now. I'm just looking at him. He's about to be crazy. You know what I mean? And the train will come and it will leave. And he won't get on or leave the station. He just pulls his pants and I'm like, see, that book was wearing its cover. Boom.